All right. Hello again, disruptive technologists. Hassan here. Today, we're speaking with Scott Moss. Scott is a prolific entrepreneur who has founded multiple companies that were eventually sold, including Technology Marketing Group in 1982, uh, Second Wind Exercise in 1995, and Mill Creek Entertainment in 2001. His latest venture is an education service um, called Sidewalk College. Um, is there anything you'd want to add to that? There, those are th those are the main companies, the three past main companies that uh, that uh, either founded or very close to founding. Uh, Second Wind, I didn't find. So, I wasn't a founder for Second Wind. I became uh, a co-owner about uh, about six months after it really started. Sounds good. Um, so why don't we get started with uh, about Sidewalk College? Can you tell us a little bit about that and what you really want to? What you really got to achieve with that? Achieve Side, with that? <laughs> Sidewalk College is a um, is we haven't really launched it yet. About to launch. Uh, it'll be before the end of the year, mm -hmm. and it is a um, lessons from the C-suite, uh, all short, all three to five minutes in length. Um, done by a lot of CEOs that you would recognize, a lot of them that you wouldn't recognize. Um, almost all are, are friends of mine and, uh, uh, and past colleagues of mine. Um, and you've got, uh, I mean, it's, it's every, little, every little business aspect that you wouldn't necessarily learn at school. This isn't, it's not going to teach you how to use Excel. It's not going to teach you linear algebra. It's not going to teach you uh, calculus. Um, it's not going to teach you uh, uh, how to uh, be a marketing expert. It's going to teach you small little lessons that are invaluable lessons, but that very few people ever learn. And it's just quick little lessons. Doesn't cost people anything. And it's from some of the great people out there. Um, so how do you see this fitting in, in the, in the picture of someone's education? Well, it, it's, it's, here's the thing. And I, I tell people this all the time. Um, I always learn something from everyone I speak to. I mean, it doesn't matter who it is. Um, my, my last company, we had an office with about 35 people in it. And, uh, uh that was Mill Creek Entertainment. I owned that. We, if I was walking through the office, somebody might be at the receptionist area. They were coming in, um, even, though, even though the sign on the front door said no soliciting, you still had people wandering in, somebody selling janitorial services. If I had nothing going on for, for a couple minutes, I'd say, I'd, I would stand there and say, give me your best pitch. Give, give, me your, give me your 30 second, your minute pitch. Maybe I've heard, I probably have heard it. Maybe I haven't. Maybe they've got something new I can learn from. And I will tell you, a lot of times I learned from that. Uh, and by the way, one of them was the no soliciting sign on the door. Uh, I mean, I vividly remember the guy who came in and he, I said, somebody, the receptionist said, did you see the sign said no soliciting? And he said, ah, that's, for, that's for people selling Girl Scout cookies. That's not for somebody like me. <laughs> and I just vividly remember it. But I learned something from everybody. Um, how does this how does this fit into somebody's education everything that happens in life you learn from good bad or indifferent maybe you learn that you don't need that product but maybe you learn that you really do need that product or that'll save you money um everything everything helps you literally from from uh, cradle to grave unfortunately or fortunately, I should say. Unfortunately, we all we all die someday, but uh, um, you know, but you keep learning up until that day. Um, I was looking through the, the bio that you sent, Lauren, um, and one of the things I saw in there was that you mentioned you were unceremoniously released from your formal education at the University of Minnesota. Um, and I, I was wondering if this if this has any relationship to that. Well, it, it kind of does, and I'll explain why. And, and I'll go back to the University of Minnesota. Uh, graduated high school, um, went on to the University of Minnesota, and a lot of, I mean, a lot of my friends, a lot of people I went to school with, went to the University of Minnesota. A lot of them went to uh, um, other close schools. A lot of them went to Madison, 
uh, because Minnesota had reciprocity with Madison. Mm -hmm. And then there were always the kids who, who went further out than that. Uh, but back in the 70s, I mean, God, I would have to say probably 80% of, of the people I knew in high school went, uh, went fairly local uh, to schools. And I went to University of Minnesota. And um, my first year I did fair at best. Um, uh, you know, just fair. Uh, wasn't, I didn't really get into it. Um, I, I've got a very, very short attention span. Um, and it's just one of, one of those things. My second year, I'm really gonna buckle down. I'm really gonna try harder. And immediately the first class I had, I, I hated. So what do you do when you hate a class? You just don't go anymore. So I took a, uh, I, and I should have just dropped it, but instead I got an incomplete, which turned into an F. So I get put on academic probation. Fine, happens, happens to the best of me. Uh, the next quarter, I'm in a business law class. And uh, business law class, it was, uh, I, I really enjoyed business law. I had a business law class in high school, loved the class. Um, and went into this class with really, really high hopes because uh, I'll learn a lot from it. And I got in an argument with the professor. This was, a, it was a lecture uh, setting with, uh, I think about 100, 100, 100 to 125 students in it. Um, I got into a, as I like to phrase it, a debate. Uh, it was an argument and I can tell you exactly what it was. I vividly remember it like it was yesterday. And we were talking about oral contracts and, and she was saying that oral contracts aren't enforceable. I said, of course they, they are. So oral contracts are enforceable. She goes, but there's a limit. I said, most of the time there's a limit, but there are some that there is no limit on an oral contract. She says, that's not true. I said, it absolutely is. So she says, it's not. I said, will you bet me a grade in the class? Bet me an A in the class. I won't even show up anymore and I won't, I won't bother you. She says, or, or what? Or you're going to drop out? I said, no, I'm not good. I said, if, I, if I'm wrong, I'll drop out. That's fine. So she said, what, what, where is there no limit on oral contract? I said, in securities law, there, in securities work, there, is, there are times when there's no limit on an oral contract. And she said, but that's different. I said, no, that's not what you said. I gave you the example and I'm right. You're wrong. Tell everybody in the class you're wrong. And I probably... I was probably too aggressive on saying it like that. I got thrown out of the class. Uh, keep in mind, I was already on academic probation, so they're going to throw me out of school now. I go home that night, and uh, I'm essentially getting thrown out of school. I walk in my parents' house. My parents are having dinner with good friends of theirs. Um, the, uh, the wife of the couple that they're having dinner with uh, is good friends of my parents. She loves me. She adores me. She was on the board at uh, the University of Minnesota. And I'm sitting there going, this is great. I'm going to get back in school. She adores me. This is okay. So I went and uh, needless to say, I, I, I walk in very somber face and she says, what's, what's the matter? said, I had a tough day at school, and I, I explained what happened. I'm getting thrown out. And she looks at me, and I'm waiting for her to say, she'll take care of it. She looks at me and says, you know, Scott, sometimes school's just not for everybody. And, I, and I'm sitting there going, what? <laughs> what, what? What did you say? I left the room. I went to my bedroom going, this is not how it was supposed to go. <laughs> this is exactly opposite of what was supposed to happen. Needless to say, I had, I got the formal letter that I was pitched out of school. And uh, the next day I started the company. Went down to the Secretary of State's office, filled all the paperwork out, registered the name, started, uh, started a company with that. And uh, so now you're saying, what does that have to do with Sidewalk College. I figure if I didn't get uh, if I didn't get a diploma from the University of Minnesota, 
I could become chancellor of my own college, sidewalk college, and I could give myself a diploma. That's kind of tongue in cheek what it what it uh, what I tell people, but it's really you know these are the lessons that you're going to learn, kind of on the streets. Yeah, you know, like so part of what I'm hearing and just you know sort of connecting some of the dots here, like here you are, you know, you've you're you're you know, done with school, you're out of school, they've you know kicked you out, and you're you know, and here you are like sitting today as a super successful entrepreneur that's um, taking multiple ventures. Clearly, you know, there, there's a brain in them that's working. <laughs> um, and what I'm, what I'm sort of seeing is like, or I guess then my question for you is like, you know, is there something around experiential learning or like learning on a job or learning by doing or like just thinking about your conversation you just shared with uh, the business law professor? I mean, everything, and I've got a, I've got a fairly good memory, not a phenomenal memory, um, but a pretty good memory. And I do read a lot of publications, a lot of newspapers, a lot of magazines that used to be, used to be in print, uh, now a lot of them online and things like that. And I will, I will remember, um, and have pretty good recall on a lot of those things. Mm -hmm. I've read a lot of manuals, whether they're computer manuals, things like that. So when all of a sudden somebody says something, I can recall it. If I can't recall the whole thing, I, can, I know exactly where to go back and look. Um, and the other thing I always say is, you know, we, we've all made mistakes. And, and hopefully you don't make too many of the same mistakes over and over again. You know, make them once, learn from it, and then don't make it again. Um, uh, you know, and that's, and that's really, I mean, really a big, a big thing. And, and memory retention is, is huge with it. You know, let's, let's talk a little bit about, you know, you, you so you finish, you know, you're, you're, you're start, you start your first company, which is technology marketing group, right? Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, you mentioned you started out with $5,000 back in 1982. Yeah. I, um, uh, childhood uh, friend of mine who mm. uh, uh, the two of us, he actually got thrown out of Madison uh, about the same time, came to the University of Minnesota, kind of left that and uh, uh, we started Technology Marketing Group. We both uh, uh, put $5,000 in. We went to, uh, we went to the bank. Uh, we had, uh, uh, we knew a couple people at the local bank. They gave us a one month loan for $5,000. It was great. And they'd have to renew the loan every month because we couldn't, of course, pay it back. And we started a company called Technology Marketing Group. And we didn't know exactly what we were going to do, but we knew we were going to do something with computers. I mean, I I'd had a little bit of a background with computers. Um, he was very interested in them at the time. And so we started looking for some office space. Well, it, we had, we, that was our first partnership argument. Uh, I thought we should get the big space, which was 10 by 20 feet. He thought we should get the eight by 10 office that we could kind of split in half. Yeah. And uh, the good news is we got the little bit bigger space and we shared it. We, we had shared it with a friend, uh, a guy that we had met. And uh, we had a little office there and we proceeded to uh, make some good connections in the computer industry. We started to sell product. Um, and what would happen is, we would, we, we would place ads in some of the local trade publications and for, for hard drives, for video cards. And this was really right when the IBM PC came out. And we would sit and get, uh, uh, we would get uh, phone calls and people would, people would ask us, do you have a IBM monochrome card in stock? And you'd be sitting on the phone and you'd, you'd, you know, you'd, be, you'd be like this. You're talking on the phone to them. And you'd, you'd go, hang on, let me check my computer and see if we have it in the warehouse. Cover up the phone, look at the, look at the, at the bookshelf behind me that was empty and go back to the phone and go, we can have it for you in three days. Sure. So made the sale. Now I got to go find the product. I call some friends on the West Coast. Do you have this product? Sure. Can you ship it to me so I get it overnight or can you drop ship it to this guy? Sure. We do that 
one guy pays me, I pay the other guy. I've now made 20, 30, 40, $50 on a video card. And I'm happy. The guy got his video card, my friend in California, he got, uh, he got paid wholesale for it. And uh, pretty soon, I mean, our first year in business, we did about $2.1 million. And we were, we were, we were ecstatic with that. I mean, and it, and it went from there and grew up to uh, an excess of a billion dollars a year in revenue. Yeah, that's, that's amazing. And like what I'm really hearing that I just, there's just a hustle and like, uh, it's like, a, I got to make this work. We, you didn't, you don't, you really don't have a choice. Yeah. Um, and I, I've, and this has happened, this has happened to me a couple of times where people have come wanting to start companies or they've got an idea, they've got something going on in there and they ask myself or, or one of my business partners or a friend, um, do you want to invest in a company? And we've said this before where they, they come from, they, they've done, they've been successful. They've got a lot of money, but they're, but they want us to be partners with them. And I don't have an issue with that, but the problem is, a lot of times they're not hungry enough. Where we're all of a sudden, if it doesn't work, they just go, ah, I can sit back and do nothing. You yeah. know? And, and that's not, you want somebody that, you know, that they have to make it work. You know, they may have a family, they have to feed themselves, they have a house payment, they have rent, they have, uh, you know, they have to pay for their car, they have to do everything. And that's kind of what you want. You want somebody that's hungry. So after, um, after having that successfully at first business and selling it, and now you're in this situation where you don't really, you, you know, you don't need the money. How did, how did you find that in your ventures going forward? Um, we didn't, one thing is we didn't go raise funds. Mm, okay. We didn't, we didn't, we didn't go out asking people for money at all. Um, it was all self-funded. Um, we, uh, uh, so that's, that's really where the difference is. Now, yeah. having a line of credit, not necessarily going and raising capital at all. That's just, you know, that's just uh, can be dangerous, but is a business decision. It's not, uh, you're not going out and uh, selling portions of your company for it. Yeah. Okay. That, that makes sense. Um, all right. Uh, is there, well, I guess I got one question for you. So if you like, you know, I mean, just, sitting back from where you, where you are now, like if you look at uh, creating like, like an ideal educational curriculum for an entrepreneur, what would that look like? Well, it, it's kind of interesting. I have, I have friends, um, a number of friends, a lot of friends that have gone back for their MBAs, okay? Um, and one that just sticks out in my mind they, they got their MBA. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave the names and who it is out of it. Yeah. <laughs> but they, they went back, they got their MBA, um, and, they're, and they're a smart person. And I, and I was saying something to them one day, and I said, what, what's the ROI? Okay. They're looking at me. I'm like, and they, they didn't know what it was. I said, Re return on investment. Oh, well, I don't know. And, and I said, what do you mean you don't know? I said, it, the, the ROI, is the, that's the whole thing. They said, well, I didn't learn it. You know, I said, you, you got your MBA. What, you don't understand this? You don't grasp that concept? Well, that's not what, that's not what we learned uh, in business school. I said, that's the first thing in business school. You know, mm -hmm. that, that's actually, you know, figuring out is business school worth it? Is, is, is getting your MBA worth it? What's your return on investment for your MBA itself? Forget about using it in the real world. Um, so what I'm kind of getting at is, and I'm not trying to, and I'm not trying to uh, say that regular education isn't good. It is. It's yeah. really good. And I can give you an example of, of real world education that I didn't have that, that, and when I say you don't want to make the same mistake twice, I think I made the same mistake when we first started the uh, technology marketing group. I made the same mistake probably 10 times, and I'll explain that in a minute, but um, it's really experience. I mean, you don't want to go to school and get, and I'll, and I'll steal a line uh, from a 
what I think is a very good financial guy. Uh, I'd like to consider him a friend of mine. Uh, when Dave Ramsey talks about, uh, about education and finances, don't go and take out a student loan and spend 50 or $100,000 and get a degree in left-handed puppetry. I mean, it, it, it's not going to do you any good. You're going to be in debt forever. And where are you going to go with that degree? Okay. Now, if you want to get that degree and, and just, you know, just finance it yourself, your parents are going to pay for it or something like that. Great. God bless you. Go and do it. Go do whatever, you know, go, go get a degree in anything you want. But you need to, you need to be able to bob and weave like a boxer. You might get that degree in left-handed puppetry, but you need to be able to be a well-rounded um, uh, person, shall we say. And what I mean by that is you still need to learn Excel, which in my opinion is the, is, is the most important single piece of software out there. I don't care if you're never, if, if, you, if you are n never going to do anything else, you need to learn Excel. You have to. Um, I mean, it's, it's something that I've, I've harped on it with my kids. You need to be able to be able to do a basic spreadsheet. You should, I really want you to go further than that, but you need to be able to do it. I see kids coming out of school, they can't do a spreadsheet. And it just, that, that absolutely, absolutely kills me. Um, and by the way, I do, and I'll make a few enemies with this, with this comment, um, that uh, the schools are partly to blame. I mean, you need to, you need to graduate someone where, and, I, and I'm going to date myself here, um, you know, it used to be you graduate high school, you should be able to balance your checkbook, okay? I'm not sure people know what checks are anymore. <laughs> You know, I mean, I, I haven't, I actually haven't written a check now in about probably three or four years. Um, but you, uh, you really need to have everything, you need to encompass everything in, in, in a person coming out of school. And if you don't go to school, that's fine. If you want to go to vo vote, uh, uh, a vocational technical college, um, it's phenomenal. I mean, electricians, plumbers, carpenters, I mean, you're talking about jobs that are, are making easy, easy in the six figures. Um, and by the way, all three of those vocations should still know Excel. Um, you know, they, they need to be able to do all of these things with it, whether it's keeping track of their uh, whether parts and things of that nature, but it, it's, it's really important that they, that they know kind of a little bit of everything. They want to master something, but you got to know, you got to kind of know everything that you're going to be doing. Um, and when I was, when I was saying only make the mistake once, and this is why you, you, and I also look at the things that you don't know, you need to hire really good people to surround you. Okay. Um, when we first started technology marketing group, we had it, we had a computer and we had, they just released Peachtree software for IBM and we loaded it up on the IBM. We're going to do our accounting software. Uh, we were, it was going to handle all of our accounting uh, stuff on it, all our invoicing, all our inventory, payables, receivables, everything. And we would work and sell you know, computer components all day long. And then we, my, my business partner and I, we'd run to dinner and we'd come back and then we start doing the books. And we did the books, I bet 10 times, we had to reinitialize the software 10 times or nine times, I, I would say, because we were doing it wrong. Um, we both had, had had classes in accounting in high school and college, but we just, we, we didn't have enough of it. And we needed more and we couldn't afford to put anybody else in place. Uh, the good news is software's gotten better. We wouldn't, made, we wouldn't make those mistakes again, but
but it was one of those things where unfortunately we were kind of banging our heads against the wall because we did make those mistakes over and over again. Um, and I mean, when you do hire somebody, you really want to hire the best you can. Um, you need to surround yourself with good people. You don't want to surround yourself with yes people and you don't want to surround yourself with uh, mediocre people. I mean, get, get really good people. Um, you know, and there are people that you're going to hire that are going to, that are going to rise to the occasion. And that's, those are the, and when I say even, and when I say mediocre, they may not be the best in the world for a specific task, but you can make them into the best in the world. Yeah, I think that's great advice for any entrepreneur. Um, is there anything else you'd like to share with our listeners? Anything else you'd want to leave them with? Um, so it's a really open-ended question. <laughs> I mean, I could, I mean, how much time do we have? I can go on for a few, about four or five more hours just talking about myself here. Um, I mean, you know, it, it's, you, you really want to, um, and it's, it's with everything in life. Okay. Communication is a huge thing. Now, if my wife or my kids were sitting here, they go, Oh my God, he doesn't communicate with us. Don't listen to him. Don't, uh, you know, uh, but I, but I do. And I try and I, and I, by the way, I'm not perfect. I'm far from perfect. Okay. Uh, I'm probably the least perfect person that you'll, that you'll talk to or meet in the next year. Uh, but I try. And the one thing that I can, that I would recommend for everybody out there, it doesn't matter what business you're in. It doesn't matter what education level you, you, you're at or are trying to attain. Communications is the number one thing. Um, when you're, when you're in a setting at, at technology marketing group, uh, I mean, when, when we, uh, when we had sold the company and left the company, we had, we had 700 employees, 650 employees, give or take. Um, I mean, you got to communicate with people. Um, if somebody is not doing a good job, it's really easy to sit there and just kind of turn your back and go, you know, go to, go to another person in the company and go, oh, let's just, just fire that person. They're not good. You know, and, and, and they just sit there and they, they don't do the right job after that. And you don't talk to them. You don't tell them what they need to do. You, you haven't given them any expectations. You don't have any goals. You don't have any standards. You need to communicate that with people. You can't, you can't just think that people are going to get something via osmosis. It just, it, it really doesn't happen. They aren't going into the lunchroom and reading the board that says, you know, what they need to do for their job. Um, and, and by the way, not everybody is cut out to do every single job. I mean, that's the, that's the other thing you've got to always remember. Um, over the years, and, and this is one thing that I, I really, I, I take to heart, I hate firing people. I don't like it. Um, there have only been a couple times when I've been happy to fire people, and those people were stealing from us, you know, where it was somebody in a warehouse, you know, stealing product out, I have no issues with that. I'm happy to do that. But for somebody who just doesn't do, uh, they don't get the job, they don't understand it, they were put into the wrong position. I mean, when we have to fire somebody, we look at, we look at it like we failed. Um, we didn't do the right, we didn't, we didn't do enough to, to nurture and grow them. We didn't communicate with them enough um, and we didn't help them enough. That being said, not everybody is suited for every single job out there. Um, I mean, the, the thing that we always look at, and, and it just happened with me the other day, somebody reached out and uh, said, you know, I worked for you many, many years ago. And it was, they worked for me in, in about 1986. Uh, haven't talked to them since then. And they were thanking me. Um, we, you know, we parted ways at one point. They thanked me because they're doing a completely different industry, completely different job. And they said, you 
kind of kicked me in the pants and I'm now doing what I love and I'm doing great at it. And, you know, it's, it's stuff like that, that, that all of a sudden it makes you feel good, but it also tells you that just because somebody doesn't do, you know, a sp specific job well, doesn't mean that they're, that they're, that they're doomed forever. No, there are lots of other things that they can do and they're probably really good at something else that they just haven't figured out what it is yet. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a tough one out there. And now just a, just a, I don't know how much time you've got or, or when we're, what, when we're ending um, now that Minnesota got locked down again, restaurants, bars, gyms, uh, and a few other, few other things uh, with COVID-19. I mean, everything is kind of changed. Everything is completely changed. I don't want to say kind of changed. Um, if people don't, uh, take advantage of what's going on right now to their benefit. And I hate to say it like this, but shame on them. And this is where I say education. And I was just, uh, my, my last outing for food at a restaurant was this morning. Uh, and I'm talking to, I eat there quite a few times a week and I'm talking to uh, one of the servers and uh, I was, you know, I was literally apologizing to her for what the governor did by shutting us down. I said, I'm really sorry. I hope everything's okay. And, and she said, I'm, I'm going back to school. I'm starting school uh, uh, online on Monday. I said, that's phenomenal. And what I'm getting at is take advantage of, of what's going on right now. I mean, it's a, it's a horrible thing, but turn it into a positive, whether that's, you know what? I'm overweight. I got to start working out. I'm going to start working out. I don't care if it's doing, you know, sit ups and push ups in your living room because you don't have equipment or going, you know, outside and walking three miles, whatever it has to do, whether it's losing weight. Um, by the way, go and learn something, whether it's going to, you know, sidewalk college or if, if, if we launch by time people see this, um, or whether it's just going to YouTube or whether it's going to one of the online. Uh, online academies, schools to learn Excel or grab a manual, go borrow a manual uh, from somebody, go to the library, go look online, uh, you know, for, uh, uh, for all of the, you know, lessons on, on Excel or other products, um, you know, go learn programming, go learn, uh, you know, Python, uh, Ruby on Rails, you know, all of these things there, they can be very, you know, everybody thinks that programming is very difficult. It can be incredibly difficult, but it can also, you know, doing simple things can be pretty easy and very rewarding. And, you know, use this time to your benefit. Don't sit there and, oh, you know what? I woke up at 10 o'clock in the morning. I'm going to turn the TV on and, uh, you know, watch TV all day. And I'm just going to, you know, I'm, I'm just going to waste this time. You can't do that. You've, you've got to, you know, this kind of goes back to my learn from learn something from everything that you do and everyone you speak to. And don't don't take this time and, and waste it. Well, yeah, Scott, I think that's a great note to end on is just learn something from everything. Learn something from the moment we're in right now. Yeah. Um, and thank you I, so much. I got I've got to tell yeah. you one thing. Yeah. yeah. Every, every time I'm in an Uber. Okay. I have friends who will get in an Uber. They won't talk. They won't say a word to the driver. Okay. I sit and talk to the drivers because, and I got to, and I've got to tell you, I've learned some stuff from these guys that you just, you can't even imagine. Um, you know, uh, and, and that, that helped me in business. Um, and you, you've got to, you've got to understand the environment around you and constantly monitor that environment, take it in and learn from it. That's great. Um, you know, I was just thinking like, uh, you know, I've had a lot of moments being on Ubers and I do the same thing. I'm having conversations with the, with the driver, but I've, I've been with friends who are in the car with me and they're just like, what are you doing? You know, and for me, it's like, wow, this person's like, you know, telling me part of their story and it's, you know, it kind of, 
fills in some of those gaps and that new place you're at, you know, whether I'm like traveling or uh, just, you just learn something new and it's, it's always, uh, it's always great. So. Oh yeah. No, yeah. Abso absolutely. Absolutely. I, and you know, if, and, and by the way, it's just, it, it, it isn't just a nice thing to do and it gets back to the learning. You see somebody on the street, say hi to them, you know, and if you strike up a conversation, great. Maybe you'll learn something. Maybe you won't. Who knows? But, uh, uh, you know, it, it can't hurt. That I can guarantee. Yeah. Well, Scott, thank you so much for your time and your generosity with your time. Um, yeah. And um, on that note, I will end this conversation.